want to give us a high five? <laughs> good job, good job. You're so smart. You're so smart. Hello, I'm Amy, the bunny lady, and this is my partner, Ellie. We're here to teach you about how to care for your pet rabbit so they can be happy and healthy bunnies. High five. <laughs> good job. The first thing that I want to talk about is enclosure size. Most of the enclosures that you're going to find in pet stores are actually much too small for rabbits. Um, what you want to find is an enclosure that is big enough for your rabbit to hop three to four times across uh, the entire length of the cage. And then you want them to be able to sprawl out across the width of the cage too. And so for the most part, what I actually recommend is getting one of these um, pens instead of getting a cage. It's got a gate and it's got little things on the side where you just hook it into the other side. The, the minimum that you're going to want to go for, the minimum size, is probably about four feet by two feet. But the problem is rabbits are all, they're, they're drastically different sizes. So a good cage for like a two pound rabbit is not going to be a good cage for a 10 pound rabbit. So you really need to take your rabbit size into consideration. You can also free range a rabbit or let them roam the house, but you do have to do a lot of work to make sure that you have uh, fully rabbit proofed your house so that your rabbit can't get into any trouble and they can't get into any danger. Which brings me into my next point, point number two, to have a, a happy, happy and healthy rabbit in your home. You need to rabbit proof your home. And what that means is rabbits have a tendency to dig and chew on things that they're not supposed to. It's just kind of their innate behavior because in the wild they would be, they would have been burrowers so they dig their homes and they chew on roots. They also need to chew on things because uh, their teeth never stop growing. They're open rooted teeth and um, they need to chew on things to help keep their teeth healthy. So you want to make sure you rabbit proof your house so that they're not digging into things um, and like destroying your carpet or um, chewing on things that they shouldn't. So the most important thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is cover your wires. Rabbits love <laughs> to find and chew on wires. And this can be both um, upsetting because you know now you can't charge all of your, your electronics, um, which is pretty bad, but also it can be really dangerous for rabbits if they chew on a live wire, they can get electrocuted. And um, yeah, that's not good for a little rabbit. Some rabbits, especially female rabbits, are, are going to have more of a tendency to dig uh, into carpets uh, or onto the sofa. So what you want to do to keep their natural behaviors from being destructive is to cover the areas where they are exhibiting their behaviors. Normally this is going to be in the corners of rooms. That's where they're going to try to dig to, you know, expand the area or dig a tunnel or something like that. So what you want to do is um, put something down, put a mat that you don't mind them digging into or an area rug, or you can get these plastic mats, the ones that would go underneath your, your desk when you have like a carpet and you want your chair to still roll. So you can get one of those mats, put it in the corner of the room so that your rabbit can't dig into it um, and they just won't be able to go anywhere. Um, you, for a budget option, there's always cardboard. You'll have to replace it pretty often because rabbits do go through cardboard, but you can put that down in the corners um, to keep your rabbit from getting at the rug or from scratching at um, hard surfaces like hardwood floor. Another major area that you are going to need to rabbit proof in your home is baseboards. Not all rabbits are going to go after baseboards, but, um, but definitely some will. My, my little Illy here, my elusive, she she goes after baseboards. <laughs> she really goes after baseboards. Um, so I've been having to find some creative ways to keep her uh, from chewing on them. Uh, the first one that you're going to want to try to do is just completely block their access to them. So put furniture in front of them or um, block them off with, you can put gates next to the, the edge of the room or budget option, flatten cardboard boxes and put them next to the sides of the room. You can put cat scratcher mats to block off corners or small areas that you can't quite block with furniture. You can also use something like this um, 
Granic Smith. Granix Bitter Apple Spray. It's a deterrent, um, like a taste, something that just tastes bad. So when they chew on it the first time, they'll be like, oh, I don't like how that tastes. And then hopefully the idea is for them to not go back and chew on it. I find it kind of works in small spurts. You have to keep applying it. It's not going to just, you know, spray it once and work forever. Every couple of days, at least you're gonna need to spray some more, sometimes more often um, so that they get the idea. Um, you can also uh, make your own, <laughs> um, so I have this one here, but you can make your own with, uh, t I believe it was two cups of apple cider vinegar and one cup of regular vinegar. Shake it all together in a spray bottle and then you can spray that and it's basically the same thing. <laughs> Next what we're going to want to talk about is food. <laughs> Ellie here is demonstrating it for us, but our main, <laughs> our main rabbit food, we want it to be hay. We want it to be a grass-based hay, so Timothy hay, orchard hay, oat hay, meadow hay, anything like that. Timothy hay you definitely want to use the most because it's a rougher hay and it's got more fiber. So you, you want to use that one the most, like to be the base of their diet because it helps their digestion best and <laughs> it's a little bit better for their teeth which is very, very important for rabbits. They have a very sensitive digestion and you need to really take care to, um, to make sure they have a healthy diet. So number one, make sure they have unlimited hay. <laughs> All right, number two is actually not pellets. <laughs> I know a lot of people think that that's an important part of rabbit diet, but number two, most important part of rabbit's diet is <laughs> Leafy greens, uh, like dandelion greens, romaine, romaine or leafy lettuces, not iceberg lettuce, that's actually bad for rabbits. Parsley, cilantro, basil, um, herbs like that are good, uh, but you want to give them um, minimum of one to two cups a day. Uh, larger rabbits, obviously, you want to give more. Um, I have a chart <laughs> on my website um, that I will link to in, in the... Um, in the bottle below so that you can make sure you're giving your rabbit um, healthy healthy leafy greens and you don't have to worry about accidentally giving them something that's not good for them or giving them too much of something that's not good for them so I, I will link that in the description below for you we can talk about pellets believe it or not dry pellets are not actually a necessary part of your rabbit's diet um, but they can still have some some health benefits you just don't want them to eat too much because because <laughs> um, it will start to make your rabbit, because it can uh, cause your rabbit to gain weight and it, they're not great for your rabbit's teeth. Um, um, so you really want to only give them, um, for most rabbits it'll be a quarter cup to a half a cup a day. Um, again, there's I have a chart for that on my website. It's on the, the same the same blog as um, the one for the leafy greens, so just scroll down and find all the amounts and and degree and um like lists of of things that are good good for rabbits and bad for rabbits and you know <laughs> so what you want to do is just give them a little bit uh, i already fed her this morning so i'm not going to give her too much right now sometimes i'll give them a little bit her a little bit extra treats so that i don't feed her too many sugary treats um but i will usually put a little like one little handful half half of her daily amount into this into her bowl every morning so that she has access to that and then I'll put the rest into a little ball like this a little toy puzzle puzzle toy it's her favorite <laughs> put the rest in here I'm just gonna put a little bit in since she already she already had her breakfast today <laughs> so put this in there for her and then she gets to figure out how to she gets to figure out how to get it out herself. It's totally okay if they end up running out of pellets very quickly, if they just gobble them up. That's why, that's what the hay is for. You, like you always want them to have access to hay. The pellets are kind of just extra. They have a little bit um, extra minerals that are good for them. And it, I mean, it feels like a treat for them every, every morning during breakfast because they love, 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 love their pellets. And of course, you want to make sure that they have access to fresh water every day. I give her a big bowl like this. 
Uh, bowls are usually going to be better for rabbits than water bottles, but it really depends on your rabbit because some rabbits will have a tendency to flip over their bowls, their food and water bowls, and um, yeah, then they'll have no water left. So in that case, you definitely want to go for a bottle over a bowl. <laughs> but they do drink a lot of water, so you want to you want to give them a bigger bowl or like a 16 ounce water bottle or more, something like that so that they don't run out of water and then refill it with fresh water every day. My friend actually uses this uh, water fountain thing so that it, it keeps the water from getting stagnant and will theoretically help, help your rabbit stay hydrated, which is always a good thing. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, treats. <laughs> Can't forget about treats. <laughs> So the best treats for rabbits are actually fresh or dried um, fruit and vegetables. <laughs> she is, she gets very excited about treats. So <laughs> these are um, treats that I have for her. They're um, like papaya chunks, little banana chips, and some dried strawberries. Um, little dried carrots or little pieces of carrots are also good. You want to give that to your rabbit in little bite-sized chunks. So you don't want to give them like a whole lot of treats at once. In fact, try to keep the treats that you give them to usually less than a tablespoon a day. Obviously, it depends on how big your rabbit is as everything else. <laughs> give me a kiss, silly. Give me a kiss. Good job. Good job. I also use um, raisins. Raisins are just dried grapes, so they're a good treat to give to your rabbit. Um, so just, just little bits every day. Smaller rabbits, less. Larger rabbits will be able to take a little bit more because, you know, they're bigger. Some people will say you shouldn't give your rabbit treats at all, but I believe in moderation. It's okay. You just need to make sure you pay attention to your rabbit's health and don't, don't give them too many. Yes, I know what I wanted to talk about next. Toys, 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 toys. Rabbits, rabbits are, can be pretty playful with toys and stuff. So you need to give them chew toys to help um, grind down their teeth since their teeth keep growing. There are a lot of natural chew toys that you can give if you want. Here's like a willow ball that they can chew on. This is a little like hardened sponge. Um, wooden chew toys are great. Uh, there's apple sticks. That they can chew on that's great for them a hanging toys for them to pull on and um yeah there's wooden toys these ones you want to make sure if they're colored like this um that it's a vegetable based dye because other paints uh, are usually not good for the rabbits uh, you can also give them cardboard like cardboard paper towel rolls and of course puzzle toys like i showed you earlier are great and uh, great fun for rabbits and they're great for enriching the rabbit's mind all right, the last part I want to talk about is actually the most fun part. <laughs> it is rabbit socialization, spending time with your rabbits and make them really part of your home. So rabbits are actually very social and intelligent creatures. You can train them like dogs, but they, they also just like to hang out with you and, and, um, and chill next to you. <laughs> Before this, before this video started, she actually just came and laid down right next to me while I was setting up the camera and stuff. So it's super cute, and um, it's great when you can socialize your rabbit and make them part of the family, just like you would for a cat or dog. And a lot of people don't realize that about rabbits and just like keep them closed away in a cage all day, and you know, just let them out, let them binky free, and be happy bunnies. Um, and just be a part of your life. They'll be happier for it, and trust me, you'll be happier for it too. So, I hope you learned a lot in this video. If you're like a new rabbit owner, and you're you ready to take home your rabbit, or you just brought your bunny home, good luck, have fun, rabbit-proof your home, <laughs> because you need to. I'll be coming out with new videos every week to give people more information on how to have happy and healthy bunny life. <laughs> um, you can also check out my blog on uh, bunnylady.com. Click the button to subscribe and the bell for notifications. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.